How low can I go on the Hobie? <laughs> low. Got a little different adventure in store today. <laughs> I haven't done a whole lot of uh, Blackwater River fishing here in the coastal plain, but I do know it's really beautiful. <laughs> this feels prehistoric. So, let's see what we can find. So much pollen already. That happened quick, spring. <laughs> spring did happen quick this year. It's been pretty steady in that warmer zone, so. I don't even know what to fish for, but I do know I like, I like eating crappies, I do know that. And they should be pretty active now. We're getting active, rather. I've seen some bait here. So let me start where there's some bait. Some surface bait in this zone. This is cool. I've got a little bit of tide where I'm at here, not much, but there's definitely still some tidal influence. So. I don't know. Beetle spin is what we need. Bass. Different kind of adventure, right? We got there. Brim. We'll see, maybe we'll find somewhere that looks real fishy for a flathead in a little bit. Just crappy. Ooh, he put a hook in me almost. <laughs> yeah. We got some geese for bait here. That is a bluegill. Use him for a flathead if I can kind of just determine where a flathead is. There's a crappy. It's not a big one, but. It's all kind of flooded out, I think. It's a gar. Oh, a gar. Uh, a little crappy jig. Could have been. Yeah, I hook carp pretty frequently on these little jigs, believe it or not. Oh, there we go. Lost him. That was a crappy. Uh, never mind. It was a gar. Bit my tail off. It's 
been pretty slow. A few small crappy. I do have some prime baits and got not an area in mind. Maybe I can drop those for a flathead. Ooh, nice dude, nice. Crappy for dinner. It's not a huge one, he's probably like nine, 10 inches, but at the end of the day, I am in it for the meat, so. Let's get this guy on ice. Black crappy. funny nice that's a good one too man send a picture of my buddy Steve uh, I'll probably keep like five or six maybe I'll get a couple in the freezer <laughs> look at that beautiful setting we're doing this in uh, that's awesome That's a 32 ounce jig head and a three inch Berkeley power bait there. This one's a little small, we'll put her back. I don't know if it's a female or a male, but... Oh gosh. It's a pretty nice fish down there, huh? Nice. This is so much fun, man. Peaceful day. Let me get this stupid camera out of the way. Some of them are deeper. That one's an eight, was like eight to ten feet probably. Are getting a little bit smaller. So much for flatheads. I was like, oh, maybe I'll try for a flathead. Not yet. Oh, that's a good one. Nice. I think this is going to be the size. Most of these are going to be like those 11 inches. You know, those 14s and 15s do tend to be a little more elusive around here. But these are fine to eat. One of the one of the few uh, one of the areas that it's also just better to keep the fish out of too. So that's exciting stuff. I love me some crappy. My wife would enjoy doing this with me too. You've got these gulp minnows, these should work too.
Yeah, buddy. Yeah. Seems like the gulp's getting better bites than the power bait. Power bait definitely got some bites, but cool. Two pound test, man. It really, <laughs> this is exciting stuff, man. It takes these, uh, turns these 11 inch fish into, you know, monsters. Yeah, let me just measure one. They're all kind of similar. Seems like I'm either keeping them or they're, I'm just not even bothering. Yeah, 11 and a half and 12. So decent fish. These fish got plenty of meat. Great fishing. Cute. All right, it's time to move to the next weed mat. Okay, next, next one we'll just take our fins out first, save ourselves that drama. All right, cruising around now. There's one last spot I want to hit. I'm gonna hit that on the way back. Current stopped around here too. There's like areas of current and areas of no current. Let's give it a try. This looks like it's got a lot more current to it, so that's usually not as good, but you never know. It's got a lot of little guys on it. Two pound test, what do we got? Oh, pulled him. Had to be a bass. Yeah, this looks good, but there's not much water back there. Okay, midday now. Put a lot of miles in, just explored around. Um, current's getting pretty strong in some areas, so uh, this isn't really the time of year to, to do that heavy current stuff. I still haven't tried those flathead baits out. I don't even really figure out where to even drop them. Car behind me too. Ooh, nice. Look at that one. Nice. I think it's more about how it drops in the water column. A 132 ounce and a three inch gulp minnow. Just two pound of test, no leader, straight to the jig. Getting them towards the bottom sometimes too. Like some are pretty high up, but I'm getting a lot of them like six to 10 feet down.
you want a couple of fish for dinner? Like I, I kept like six or seven for the next few days, but do you want a few? No. Alright. That cold minnow gets a thud. Love those things. I was actually expecting to see more bowfin and stuff like that to kind of fill in the gaps of action. Just a couple of gar. Yeah, it was the first time fishing the weed mats. Buddy Judson kind of uh, put me on to that. It's a lo local guide. I'm fishing a totally different area, but you can check out his channel. I'll put a link in the video's description. There's a bunch on this tree here. I thought they were gar, but it turns out they're crappy. Little ones need love too. A lot of non-active fish overall though. That's what I'm noticing. Am I saying crappy or crappie? What am I supposed to say? Every time I choose a choose a way of saying it, it's wrong. These guys are the best. They're literally the Chick-fil-A of the fishing world. As, sorry, as Chick-fil-A is the fast food. Crappy. Yeah, you get you know what I'm saying. The trick, right? Uh, it's been a while. I know I gotta get over those rib bones and get to the other side. That's the crappy trick. Cut up, cut up, cut up. Very few fish have this little extra nugget of meat like the crappies do. Very few fish have that. You don't have to usually worry about going over a rib cage or anything like that. To get much, rather. This won't be an ordinary crappy fry. I'm gonna try something different here. I'll crush down a couple of these Thai chili peppers. I know that's the thing these days, the hot honey glaze, but I kind of want to give it a try myself. So do like a spicy breading with some chili peppers. Crappy to me are, they're my top 10, at least mentally. There's lots of ways to cook these things, but at the end of the day, fry them is, uh, near and dear to my heart. I do have a bonus puffer fish that I caught the other day too, so I guess I'll use that in the mix, why not? This is out of my league, out of my pay grade. Yeah, that should be a good amount of These things are pretty hot, so. Fish is all ready, let's move on to the honey. I'm just gonna give this a try. I have not done this yet. This is gonna be my first attempt. A couple dabs of butter. Got about two tablespoons worth of raw honey here. Just to start, since I'm not sure how hot this stuff's gonna be. I also don't want it to be too hot. Yeah, let me do about two of those teaspoons. Some salt. And since most hot sauces, since I'm skipping the hot sauce and just using the crushed peppers, are vinegar based, I'm gonna add about a, I don't know, one or two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. It's also gonna have it be a little more tart, right? And you could always balance it with some more uh, honey. Just got that hot enough to melt it down. Wow. That's really spicy. That's really spicy. I'm hoping as this sits at room temperature for a couple minutes, it'll thicken up. Yeah, it is thickening up already. Good. Try it with uh, some crushed up pepper versus hot sauce and then add that apple cider vinegar uh, to your own taste. I'll give these about two minutes aside. They're thin pieces, so they'll cook really quickly. I'll give that puffer fish a little more time. Oh, oh yeah, that is a nice, crispy looking piece of fish. 
All right, let's see if this is gonna work out. It's thickened a little bit. It's not as thick as the commercial product. I didn't add any like cornstarch or thickener. It's definitely a little bit. It's not like runny, but it's not like what you would expect. Uh, maybe I added too much vinegar. That's possible, but I gotta give that. Ooh, that does look good. Yeah, maybe I did too much vinegar. Well, well, that's part of it, right? I didn't stage this. I kind of did this. Let's give this a try outside, shall we? There's pollen everywhere. Some years that's worse than others for me. Um, but all I know is <laughs> the pollen's falling and I'm catching crappy. I'm, I'm a pretty happy dude, man. That smells really good with that honey and the, the chili peppers, though. So here's what's going through my head. This can... If you take the time to perfect this, I don't cook with heat too often. So sometimes I, I'm worried I can overdo it, because I have. <laughs> These flavors go together remarkably well, though, uh, which was a surprise. All right, as always, last few times, how would I rate fishing for crappies? Uh, I'd probably give them like an 8 out of 10. I enjoy fishing for them um, quite a bit. Um, sometimes when it's a grind, it's a little bit pounding your head against the wall. You know, because they're kind of a location fish sometimes. They can just get moody where if you're not f fishing the exact specific way, they can be harder to, to get on. In terms of table fare, <laughs> I gave those Mayan cichlids, I think an eight or an eight and a half. Crappy also, eight and a half, nine. Uh, I really like it. I really think those flavors go together remarkably well. More fun than the, the basic citrus or tartar sauce. This is much more fun to me. Nice to get some, some crappies for dinner. Got a few more for a couple extra days. Check the video's description, links to everything you used. Two pound test set up and all that stuff. I'm gonna enjoy a beautiful spring day out here. Got to get to some garden work and then I'll catch up with you guys in the next video. That was awesome. So.